Hey everyone, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that little break. I had to set up some stuff and set up Dolphin. So this is just some background for this Taz before we really kick straight into it. Uh, this is going to be a very fast Taz with a lot of stuff back to back to back. So unfortunately for our host, not a good, lot of good times for donations during, but after there will be plenty of time. Uh, like I mentioned, this is being played off Dolphin. Uh, it's a great GameCube emulator. Uh, this, the theory behind this Taz is technically I could have myself start with all the items in my inventory that I needed to beat the seed and start at the right island, but that's kind of lame. So I restricted myself by saying I can't start with any items, but everything else is fair game. So I rigged it to put me on the right island. I used a recently made application for Wind Waker Rando that allows us to select where items are placed. And so I created kind of like the perfect setup, started on the right island, and then went from there. So we're going to head straight into this, and it's just, once again, a lot of back-to-back -back stuff. Unfortunately for Dean and Tanjo, I'm probably going to spend a lot of it telling what's going on. Um, so, Dang. file name select, super typical. Uh, some stuff about this Taz, it took about 2,000 re-records, and I Tazzed it over three days. I spent the first day tazzing the entire thing and the set the next two days debugging a desync. Um, so we're just gonna do some very precise movement and we're gonna get that pot. Um, it's gonna have five rupees in it. I couldn't manage to rig the RNG to give me more. It was a little frustrating, but I just went with five because, oh well. So you saw us do tag earlier and we're gonna do tag again. So some more just precise movement so I can go straight to the door, straight from the door. And we're going to roll straight to the kids. And this is where things just start to go a little... A little crazy for anyone who is mostly familiar. I need my Wind Waker because we're going to abuse some storage stuff later. But I'm going to barely clip to that point And then roll along the ledge because it's faster to follow that ledge and then jump than to jump straight off the ledge. And we're gonna go talk to Maggie. Now, once again, I picked the item locations. So Maggie, right here, she is gonna give us a leaf. One of the most versatile tools in the entire game. And then we're gonna just kinda come down here, some more precise rolls. I was off from the chest, but that doesn't matter, I'm a Taz. And get ourselves a piece of cheese or the try more, so we wanna be more specific. And some more precise rolls. Yeah, this is like, yeah, this is like a meticulously engineered Goldberg machine. Um, 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 and nab ourselves some storage right there. We're going to store that kid's text box. Dean, Tanjo, I just wanted to let you know. You're awesome. Nice. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm dropping frames like mad, and I don't know why. Yar, you got me. Yeah, I don't know why I'm dropping frames. So we're going to go get Tingle, save him. That's going to give us some more stuff. Wow, I figured out why I was dropping frames. Enabling the preview in OBS made it so I was just dropping frames, which is ironic because that's what I was using to figure out if I was dropping frames. No, we're back to dropping frames. I'm sorry, everyone, for that. Um, gonna get more Triforce stuff because we need to get the completed Triforce for the run because we need to get to Hyrule. Each item I receive has a very specific purpose and a very specific reason for why I, ha I have to get it. You can't get to Hyrule in the randomizer without the Triforce. There's literally no known method for it. Um, the leaf is for a segment that's coming up in Hyrule itself, along with the final part of it. And then the, we'll get another item, and that's very specifically for one uh, break to skip three other items. So we're going to talk to Tot. Tot's a pretty great person. 
Uh, my arm's gonna have a little bit of a seizure, but that's okay. Uh, this is perfectly fine. I'm practicing manual. I'm I'm practicing unbuffered manual super swim in the task. It's easier to have link practice than for me to practice. And we're gonna start getting more kids. Um, this upcoming segment I did release to the Wind Waker Rando community, so that's gonna look familiar for them but it's not going to look familiar for all of you guys. So I need to get storage right here. We're just going to use a fence to push ourselves off. We're going to catch that kid. Store his text. I need to get storage again. So storing his text is fast because it also cuts out a cutscene. Like it's barely faster, but I need storage again because I need his text box. And this is where things kind of start to go insane. I'm going to try to enter into the shop. The Keen of Red Lions text box is going to come up. Screen's going to go black. Collision is no longer an issue for me. I'm parkouring around. You didn't see it, but I just jumped onto the wall for the bomb shop, over the fence, and then again uh, over to get the kid. And now we need to actually capture the kid. It was actually weird, because usually you should hold forward, but the Taz was so fast, I had to adjust my rolls. And they're going to give us more. So the nice thing about this is we get to see this upcoming segment where we still don't have collision. I'm going to go onto the wall. I'm going to go onto the tree. I'm going to climb up the tree, backflip, and now I'm in this loading zone. Um, collision is a suggestion. That was probably my favorite part of this Taz was that little like three second thing we got. Oh dear. Sorry for the desyncs, everyone. I guess Dolphin really doesn't play nice. Weird. Um, now we're on to the best part, which is I need more rupees because I am still missing two items. If I'm remembering my own Taz correctly, which I probably am. Uh, so Sploosh is the next best place to get items. Usually horrendous RNG, runners hate it. Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go ba 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 ba. Easy. And we're going to get another Triforce Shard. And to top it off, another tri- Oh, wait, no, that's the hammer. Oh, Miss Marie, that's right. I almost forgot. Is this Windfall or Wisconsin? Yes. What's the difference? Wisconsin Fall. Um, and then we're going to go talk to Miss Marie. She's going to be like, oh, thanks for capturing the kids. And she's going to give us our last piece of the Triforce. So... We are now in go mode for the Taz. If you have kept track, we have all eight shards of the Triforce, a hammer, bombs, and leaf. We have to start with uh, Wind Waker and Sail. Uh, those are non-negotiable, or else technically I would start without either of those. I would probably get the Wind Waker because it's required, and then we would cruise our way to Tachi. And Tachi is the, it's Tower of the Gods, it's the segment where it's the quadrant, is a better way to phrase it, where the Hyrule portal is. But luckily enough, I'm forced to start with those items. So yeah, da 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 da. We're gonna spin in some circles, but don't worry about that. Just making some nice shapes. And we're off to Hyrule, and it's only been about... Math is hard to do in my head. Seven minutes? Eight minutes? It's faster for you to pull out the sail and then jump, and then put it away, and then pull it out again and jump. We don't do that RTA because it is a little tight on the timing, but it's easy enough for a Taz. And this is where things are still fun, still going to be action-packed, because we're going to go straight into Hyrule Castle. Little slide there, just for the fun of it. Look at Doesn't the help pace. us get the loading zone faster. Look at the pace. And we are... You don't need to worry too much about Hyrule Castle. You might notice that the rolls don't look super straight. They're done by hands and my hands are shaky. Um, plus, like when you try to manipulate the camera and the rolls at the same time, it's very time consuming. If you're familiar with the barrier, yeah, it's not here. Uh, in the swordless mode of the randomizer, which is the one we selected, the barrier is not loaded as you cannot get the master sword to break the barrier. So having it be there is pointless. So it's a very nice time save to just not have to do barrier skip because there's not a barrier to skip. Actor unloading. Um, yeah, that's really hard in North America version. 
<laughs> this was a very unfortunate time for me because in my first Taz, the one I did on the first day, it desynced right there. But I fixed that issue now, and this is the only reason we need Leaf. We use it later because it's nice to have, but technically, if we were insane, we could get around that. Uh, these were the Sairs I was talking about. We're just kind of going to grind our way around, slide to the door. Uh, it doesn't take that long to do, but we only need bombs for something else. Specifically, what's about to come up. Now, this was a very fun segment to try to Taz. Um, I eventually went more with this approach, where I would slowly try to lead them up, and then I'll cut back down real quickly so that they hit me. I need a damage down to one full heart right here. Just makes it easier for the final segment. I tried various things. I tried actually pushing a Moblin up the stairs, but unfortunately it couldn't attack me. <laughs> so I had to keep coming back down. And this is just another really fun thing that's going to come up. We're going to read this. Don't need to worry too much about it. Some nice precise rolls. We're going to have to re-equip some things. We're going to jump onto this. We're going to place a bomb down. We're going to get storage. We're going to talk. Well, talk. We're going to store that text and then we'll go through this door. Um, we left that text box open, so now I have storage again. We're going to store this door and then go back through the other door. Uh, this is very nice, as we don't have light arrows to beat Phantom Ganon. That lets you get past this segment. So instead, we're going to talk to the stone again. We're going to go back through the door, and the door's gone. Whoops. Uh, we can see the King of Red Lions off in the distance. He looks kind of cool. More actor unloading. More precise. Had to just do a little bit of precision right there, but we are leafing into the loading zone, and we are at the grand staircase. I don't have enough magic for the other stuff that would be coming up, so we're just going to get a quick magic refill right there. And this is where the non-perfectly straight rolls are going to shine. Because I'm just kind of going to go back and forth a little bit every once in a while. And we're on and it's a fun section. We just had to roll up the stairs. It's not too bad. It's not. Bad. We're gonna flip around right here, do some precision. We're gonna grab that pillar, and then once again, walls are suggestions. And you might notice I wasn't even like the ledge I was holding didn't even exist. And now we just get to buy some time. I need to wait for up at Ganon. Do some crouches. We need to get our squats in. Lots of squats. And he's going to attack us right now. We're gonna... You didn't see it, but I spent two frames moving to angle myself for this. Um... Uh, is it still really buffery? That sucks. I need, like, a little rest. Uh, we're gonna zombie hover up which is pretty nice. A little bit of manipulation getting pushed by those strings. Don't worry about the camera, everything's fine. It's not fine. Gonna keep on going. And this is, this was a very painful section to get right. But we need to place a bomb, and then I want to drop sudden lease and get a heart refill, and get a heart refill, and get a heart refill. So that skipped light arrows, hook shot, and having sanity. And then get to work with the hero sword, which is just time consuming. No one cycle to Ganondorf? Uh, no, we have the hero sword, so it's hard to get the damage. I am really weirded out about 
stuttery. I tried to do some stuff on my end that I could quickly do, but... Sorry about that, guys. We did get to watch the screenshot slideshow presentation in time. And that is the Wind Waker randomizer low percent. Oh, jeez. But I think we are ready for one more Wind Waker task. Hey, everyone. Hello. Uh, we are going to just kick it off with uh, this is kind of more of a demonstration Taz. The low percent Taz was like a full thing. But this upcoming one is more like a rough sketch because I wasn't able to finish in any percent Taz that was using the same race settings I did earlier yet. Uh, there's just a lot of options and a lot of things that make it really difficult for that to happen. So instead, we're just going to go with what is more of a rough draft of one of the dungeons. So this is Forbidden Woods, and this is what is called a go mode, or it's kind of like a start. It's You don't have to get any items, you're just rushing straight to the boss. And so this is going to be everything from entering the dungeon to hitting the boss loading zone. Um, and there's like one major mistake that I made, uh, but that's why you make these rough sketch sort of tazes. So we're going to get this started. And you'll notice we're back to playing as Link. We're going to shoot that because it's just, it's fast. You have to wait for that bulb to die completely before you can enter the door. A little bit of precise movement to get into that bulb. Um, that was not the fastest it could have been, but that was still like a really good speed. And that's just once again, one of those things where you're more going for proof of concept. Uh, another <laughs> quick little side hop thing for that bulb. Is leaf pumping there like... Not even necessary, is it? No, but it's fun. Ah. It's really fun to Taz. Uh, this is another very interesting room, because uh, I got storage this in my RTA run, but that was a first try storage, a little bit of precise movement. And... I think that sound is way behind the screen. Oh, gosh. It's okay, guys. It's literally two minutes. Um, I'm sorry about all the technical issues that are being caused during my stuff, but hey, life happens. Uh, we're going to shoot that bulb. This is a really cool shot that's going to happen. And you're able to shoot that bulb from all the way over there. It saves a little bit of time. This, I spent like four hours trying to get down. And this was the mistake. I should not be using fire arrows here. I should be using regular arrows. Um, but we still have chest storage and everything, so we're still making a good pace. We're going to be able to just quick spin them. I, you could place bombs, but I opted not to, just because it was still fast, and that would be menuing. Then we just need to get into the boss loading zone which is going to be some quick, precise rolls, and we're good. And that is the end of this Taz. Just one of those quick demonstration sort of Tazes where it's like, this is what can be done in the game, but not completely optimized. I'm just going to pause it right there. And that is actually going to be it for me. Um, that is sort of the end of my stuff, and this helps get the event back on track. So I will hand it back over to them, although they are still dealing with a little bit of technical issues, it looks like. I mean, obviously, uh, my audio is a little bit off, but that's okay. Uh, I'm really grateful for Taz Giving and the organizers. Uh, this was a really fun event to prepare and be a part of. And I, I am very happy to be here. And I'm sure my co-commentators can say the same. Thank you.